basically gaming viewers welcome back to another video this time I'm playing a game called funeral the number one things that are a very sad occasion for very many you are in this bleak funeral home amidst a few other people do you know them they look familiar but you're not sure if you've ever seen them before it is maddening this sense of familiar familiarity for some reason, you are certain that you ought to be knowing who they are, yet why can't you remember them? The funeral service appears to not start it yet. The mourners stand before the casket, nameless and lost in sight. Who are they mourning? Why are you even here? The coffin is sleek of dark ebony, the coffin of a poor man. What if he is the man that died? That's my theory. The picture atop of it, that face, is that, is that your picture? Ha, ah, I said it. A sense of alarm and disorientation grips you. What is happening? How could your photo be atop the coffin? A knowledge rises, like the rising of some dark tide, a horrific memory, then it recedes before you can identify it. You turn to the mourners, just a handful of people really, about four or five, hang back in the shadows, only three people are in the front row. Clearly the dead man wasn't very popular. You approach the three nearest the coffin. You look, they look at you unseeingly, as if as if they are looking past you. A woman in her fifties, bearing an air of faint sorrow. Her eyes are distant, testament of a lifelong a lifetime of grief. Again, there is a sense of aching familiarity. You are certain that you know her, but that that knowledge is locked away somehow. But you are unable to get him. <clears throat> Beside her, a young man in his thirties, a guarded expression and in an air of restlessness as if he would much rather be elsewhere. The sight of him troubles you, but you are not sure why. Beside him is a pretty young girl in her twenties. Her expression is subdued, thoughtful. The sight of her unexplicable strikes you like a blow. It takes some effort for you to regain your composure. Just as you approach them, a strange thing happens. Is it death? Is it coming to take me away? Just kidding. You're not sure what just happened. The world seemed to fade away for an instant. You find yourself standing before the woman. She does not acknowledge your presence. But here's an incredible thing. She does not open her mouth, but you can hear her thoughts as if she were speaking. What dark magic is this? It was so sudden. But now that I think about it, it's not so surprising. All these years, he talked about his own death. And now it came about in a way none of us expected. How did he die? Sorry for your loss. How did he die? It was terrible. He'd always been scared of a violent death, but at least it was quick. Although she does not directly respond to your question, her thoughts shift in the direction of your prompt. He'd always been terrified of suffering, of having some kind of nearly fatal accident, and then living with pain, or living as a vegetable. He was always afraid of that, of ending up a vegetable. Oh, excuse me. And then having to physically rely on someone just to be alive. Okay, can I? There we go. So I'm glad that he went abruptly. It was an instant death. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? The grief comes and goes. I still can't believe he's gone, even after all that has passed between us. You sense her thoughts shifting to the young men and woman beside her. I'm more worried about them. They've had to put up with a lot. Matthew's already going distant. He was warm for a while when he first arrived, almost like his old self. Now he's gone back to his brooding shell, like father, like son. At least Pryor is thawing a little bit. Thawing a little. Her thoughts fade away for an instant. It's incredible how one incident can destroy everything, tear a family apart and keep us apart. All those years ago, and it still haunts us. What incident? What happened? 
that part. I realize now I've been avoiding thinking about that for a long time. Maybe that's how you survive. You clamp down on the hurtful memories, lock them away in a box, and never open it, never look in. Because if you do, they'll chaff at you until you break. God knows the story destroyed the kids, how Matthew adored his father, worshipped him really, and Priya, Priya was his princess. All of that, an illusion so rudely torn away. Maybe now that he's gone, it's time to open the box and look at the terrible stuff in there. Maybe I should no longer run away from it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't think so. Her words evoke that sense of bitter agony. You want to reach out and comfort her, but you hesitate. Wouldn't that be appropriate? There's that maddening feeling of familiarity again. An ache that seems to tell you that you know this woman. And another emotion threading through the sorrow. Shame. I don't mean to pry, but what happened? Even as you ask the question, a deep dread fills you. Maybe you don't want to know the answer. Maybe you should not even ask it. The woman sighs deeply. You sense grief bubbling up inside. A wellspring of it so powerful that for a moment, you fear you will be drowned in it. Before you can catch her thoughts. Hmm? Okay. She disappears. Oh, you find yourself standing before the young man. His hands are tucked in his pockets. As he stares at the casket, he seems oblivious to the others around him. I just spoke to your mother. He looks up, startled, looks around. He does not look directly at you. He does not acknowledge your, your presence. For some reason, this does not offend. In fact, weirdly, for reasons you cannot understand, it seems the most natural thing in the world. As before, you hear his thoughts as if in response to your question. I could have sworn I heard something. I must have been hallucinating. I guess that's what not sleeping for two days does to you. Soon as this is over, I'll head back to the room, pop a couple of V's, and get knocked out. Though I'm not sure I can. What with all these thoughts? It's amazing how she can grieve over him at all. That she still won't say a bad thing about him after all he's done. Mom's barely holding on, but she's not going to show us that as usual. She's concerned about you. She's always worried about us. That's how it's always been. That's part of the problem. She thinks that's why she hid the truth from us. But I think she was mostly just hiding the truth about him from herself. A part of me is guilty, thinking I should be grieving over him. He was my father, after all. Then another part of me, the larger part, doesn't care at all. Do I feel, really feel anything? Any loss? It's strange. I feel nothing. That's such an awful way to feel about your father's death. But is it really? When was the last time I spoke to him? Maybe four years now? I'm not angry. I think the years have softened the anger. I'm just apathetic, really. When I got the call, it was almost like Ma was telling me about someone else's death. A stranger's. You sense anger, even frustration in his thoughts. His mother. Shouldn't he be beside her, comforting her? But there seems to be some kind of distance between them, an abyss that is impossible to cross. He seems to pick up on your thoughts. <clears throat> A part of me does wish I could go to her. But where do we start? It's too far gone, and it's all because of him. What happened? What did your father do? I, that's what I want to know. A buzzy fills the world, and his next thoughts are drowned in it. The world is fading away, a memory rising. You know this place. You have been here. You... A horrific image, a memory. Should I brace myself or something? Oh. What the heck did he do? Did he kill himself? Now you're standing before the girl. She is deeply sad within. A measure of relief fills you. At least one of them is grieving the man in the casket. Yet looking at her fills you with unexpected and surprising sorrow. You want to reach out to her, hold her, tell her that all will be okay, 
but you know you can't do it. You don't even know her. Don't you? Don't you know her? Are you sure? Why does she invoke such grief in you? You want to ask her if she loved the man in the casket? But that would be a terrible thing to ask at a funeral. But it's a good question. Did she? Why are you here? And who are these people? Why does and why does your not knowing the answer to these questions not bother you? In fact, now you feel very calm, except for the ebbing and flowing under tides of sorrow. You are mostly at peace. I'm so sorry. She sniffles and does not acknowledge your words. That should have struck you as rude, but it doesn't. I can't believe he's gone. I can't believe it. And suddenly, and in such a terrible a way, at least he didn't suffer. Mom saw the body and she said his face. Was, was le what was left of it looked so peaceful, almost like he was sleeping. It's the strangest thing. I never thought I'd feel this terrible. And now look at me. I guess it goes to show when he was alive, we barely talked. Except for those occasions I called. I think I hardened my heart to him. Maybe that's what happened. I put up a wall, and now that he's dead... She does not respond and stays lost in thought. To think that it all goes back to that one moment, everything would have been different if only Dad had killed himself? I'm pretty sure that's what they're gonna say. That's obvious. If only I had what? A bird of sensation fills you. In urgency, it is imperative for you to find out what happened to this family. What has broken them apart? Your very soul seems to depend on it. You find the woman, their mother, standing slumped. She stares off into the distance. I need to know what happened. She looks right through you. Her gaze is haunted. Whispers, he's been at it for years. I never even knew. But that's a why, isn't it? I knew, of course, I knew. I knew, yet I didn't allow myself to know. I kept it a close secret because my biggest fear was the children would find out. I didn't want them to know what kind of man he was, and so I stayed quiet. <sighs> through, all, through all those nights, when he was away at his supposed business trips, late at work, late at work at meetings, I told the kids that their father was a busy, Oh no, don't tell me he... Why do people cheat? Why? Something I'll never get. Something I don't get and ever want to get. And that was how it was, wasn't it? Dad's always away. He's busy. He's busy earning a living. Busy, always busy. I saw him about once a week during school days, and most weekends he wasn't there. I guess it was normal for most rich kids. You got used to it. We went to school where everybody's dad was some big shot. Away most of the time. And we bought it. That's the awful part. We bought it hook, line, and seeker. Ma, dad's going to miss out on PTA again. They want to see him. Your dad's busy, honey. He's a busy man. Until... Princess, that's what he used to call me. Princess, I used to wait to see him, to get the gifts, the hugs. I would wait to smell his cologne. I used to wait for that. I loved him. We all did. And then, when it happened, it all blew up in his face. It had to happen. He'd been sleeping with too many women, you see. Mainly by corrosion. It appeared the big CEO of a multinational corporation. It was bound to go wrong. You can't hide the truth forever. That horrid woman, Laura, that awful phone call, she spilled it out. And then other women came forward to his workplace. That whole Me Too movement thing. Harassment. I tried even then to hide it, but... Oh, maybe I'm looking into this wrong. What boy has to live with something like that? Going to school, 8th grade, your dad's name in every paper. Hashtag Me Too. <laughs> they crucified me, even those teachers. They screwed with me in front of the whole class. Son of a rapist, molester junior, the names kept coming. 
I think that's when Matthew began shunning us out and all the stories started coming together. When Dad was really up to all those business trips, what they actually were, and Ma tried to protect them from it till the end, very end. She never told us the truth. He was a liar. That's what he was. Six months. That's how long it took to lose everything. After he lost his job, the house, the fancy perks, the kids have to leave the private schools, and then after they got divorced, it was over. Over for us. Matthew couldn't wait to leave home when he finished college, and I don't blame him. He never looked back once. He never forgave them, either of them. It wasn't Mom's fault, but we were just kids, and she didn't know how to deal with the fallout. The relatives, the, huh? The, <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that word. The press, she shut us out too. Do you forgive him? I want to forgive, but he ruined our lives. All for lies, all for something so cheap. For sex? You stand before her and feel, you feel a terrible sense of shame. And of course you know why. You knew from the beginning. You know who was in there. The dead body that lies with them was once yours. But you had to know. Had to see. I don't want to see a dead body. They weep. They stand apart. They are, are broken. And you broke them. And, oh, oh, I was expecting a jump scare. Holy cow, that was deep. That was really deep. So, yeah, that's funeral. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll see you all in another video.